The Hours of the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ by Luisa Picaretta. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 8 a.m. Jesus returns to Pilate. Barabbas is preferred to Jesus. The scourging. My tormented Jesus, my poor heart follows you in great pain and anxiety. I see you clothed as a madman, but I know you are infinite wisdom who gives judgment to all. And so I become frantic and cry out, What? Jesus insane? Jesus a criminal? And he must take second place to Barabbas, the greatest evildoer? My Jesus, peerless sanctity, once again you stand before Pilate. Upon seeing you so pitifully abused and clothed like a crazy man, and knowing that Herod did not condemn you either, he grows more indignant with the Jews and more convinced of your innocence. He does not want to condemn you, but at the same time he wants to give some satisfaction to the Jews. He wants to extinguish the hatred, fury, and burning thirst for your blood that consumes them. So he compares you to Barabbas. But the Jews answered, We do not want Jesus set free, but Barabbas. Let Jesus of Nazareth be sent to the cross. Oh, the outrage of human injustice. A people so blessed by you prefers an infamous criminal and condemns you to the cross. And so Pilate, not knowing what to do to calm them, condemns you to the scourging. My Jesus rejected, while the Jews are determined to put you to death. My heart breaks to see you all self-contained, intent upon giving life to everyone. Straining my ears, I hear you say, Holy Father, look at your son. I am clothed as a madman. This makes reparation to you for the folly of so many sinful creatures. Let this white garment obtain from you the release of so many souls who clothe themselves in the gloomy garment of sin. O oh, Father, See the hatred, the fury, and the rage that they feel toward me, which makes them lose the light of reason and grow thirsty for my blood. Hence, I want to make reparation to you for all hatred, vengeance, murder, and wrath. And I want to obtain the light of reason and faith for everyone. My Father, look at me again. Could I have suffered a greater insult than to see the greatest criminal preferred to me? I want to make reparation to you for all the times when evil is preferred to good. Ah, the whole world is steeped in preferences. Some people prefer a vile self-interest to us. Others prefer honors, vanities, pleasures, attachments, prestige, orgies, and even sin itself. All creatures unanimously reject us, even in the face of any little trifle. I am ready to accept Barabbas's being preferred to me to make reparation for the vain preferences of men. How many such preferences there are even among those who love Jesus. Ah, oh, let each of us always seek that pure, strong love that sets everything and everyone aside for Jesus, even our life and blood. My Jesus, I feel myself dying of pain and distress on seeing your great love in the midst of so many sufferings and your heroism in the midst of so many insults. Your words and reparations wound my poor heart like so many thunderbolts. 
In my agony, I repeat your prayers and your reparations. Not even for one instant do I want to separate from you. If I did, I would fail to notice so many things that I want to do with you. Now, what do I see? The soldiers take you to a column to scourge you. My love, I follow you. With your loving gaze, look at me and give me the strength to stand by you in your sorrowful scourging. Jesus scourged. My purest Jesus, now you stand by the column. The furious soldiers free you to bind you to it. But this is not enough. They strip you of your garments to make a bloody sport of your most holy body. My love, my life, I feel sick with sorrow on seeing you naked. You tremble from head to foot and a virginal blush appears on your holy face. You are so distressed and exhausted that you cannot stand on your feet and you almost fall at the foot of the column. But the soldiers hold you up, not to help you, but to bind you so that you do not fall. Now they take ropes and bind your arms so tightly that they swell up quickly and blood issues from the tips of your fingers. They bind you to the column's ring and pull the ropes so tightly that you cannot make even one movement leaving themselves free to unleash themselves upon you. My stripped Jesus, allow me this relief, otherwise how will I continue to see you suffer so much? How can you, who dress all created things, the sun with light, the sky with stars, the plants with leaves and the birds with feathers. How can you be stripped? What arrogance. With the light that radiates from his eyes, my loving Jesus says to me, Be silent, O oh child. I had to be stripped in reparation for so many souls who strip themselves of all modesty, purity, and innocence. These souls divest themselves of every good, of every virtue, and of my grace, covering themselves with filth and living like beasts. In my virginal blush, I want to make reparation for so much indecency, luxury, and bestial pleasure. Be attentive to what I do. Pray and make reparation with me and calm yourself. My scourged Jesus, your love goes from excess to excess. I see the executioners take the whips and beat you mercilessly, covering your holy body with bruises. They beat you with such ferocity and fury that blood streams from your most sacred body. They continue to beat you and lacerate your most pure flesh. But it is still not enough. Two others take their place and taking up chains of hooked iron, they continue the sorrowful carnage. At their first blows, they tear your beaten and wounded flesh completely to shreds. It falls to the ground leaving your bones bare and your blood pours out, forming a lake at the base of the column. My Jesus, my love, laid bare, while you suffer the storm of blows, I embrace your feet. I want to share in your pains. I want to be entirely covered with your most precious blood. O oh, Jesus, scourge my mind and drive out every thought that could distance me from you. Scourge my eyes, and if they want to look at earthly things, strike them with your scourges 
and make them look only at you. Oh, Jesus, the sound of your whips reaches my ears when you see me listening to things that distract me from you. My Jesus, strike me with your whips and entice me to listen only to your voice. Oh, Jesus, scourge my face, and if some act of complacency or self-importance should make an impression upon me, let the blows of your whips detach me from the earth and spur me to look only at heaven. O oh, Jesus, scourge my tongue and my lips, and if they should dare to pronounce a word that is not for your love and glory, may your scourges strike me and cast fire and flames upon me to ignite with love not only me, but all those who listen to me as well. O oh, Jesus, scourge my hands, May every movement I make and every work that I do be signed with the seal of your love. O oh, Jesus, may your whips strike my feet. I beg you to bind them tightly to your feet to keep me from taking a single step that is not for you and so that I might lead others to love you. O oh, Jesus, scourge my heart with your dispositions, affections, and desires, so that every blow I receive leaves a wound in my heart. And may these blows give birth to a living love in me. My Jesus, as I stretch my ears, I hear your moans, unheard of by the others because the storm of blows deafens the air around you. In those moans you say, all you who love me, come to learn the heroism of true love. Come to extinguish in my blood the thirst of your passions, the thirst of so many ambitions, of so much vanity, pleasure, and sensuality. In my blood, you will find the remedy for all your evils. Your moans continue to say, Look at me, O oh Father. I am all wounded under the storm of blows. But that is not all that I want. I want to form enough wounds in my body to make homes for all souls in the heaven of my humanity. I want to form their salvation in myself and make them pass into the heaven of my divinity. My Father, let every lash of these scourges make reparation before you for every kind of sin. As these lashes strike me, may they excuse those who inflict them. May these blows strike the hearts of creatures Speak to them of my love and make them surrender to me. As you say this, the love with which you suffer is so intense, even though your pain is excruciating, that you almost incite your torturers to beat you more. My Jesus, you are stripped of your flesh. Your love overwhelms me. I feel as if I am losing my mind. Your love is still not tired, but the executioners feel too weak to continue their butchery. They cut your ropes and you fall almost dead in your own blood. As you see the shreds of your own flesh, you almost die of sorrow contemplating the loss of the damned souls. So great is your sorrow that you almost drowned in your own blood. My Jesus, let me take you into my arms to restore you a little with my love. I kiss all your wounds 
and I enclose all souls in you with my kisses so that no one will be lost and you bless me. Reflection for the 8 a.m. hour. At this time, Jesus is stripped naked and subjected to cruel beating. Am I stripped of everything? Jesus is bound to a column. Do I allow myself to be bound by love? Jesus is bound to a column while I, with my sins and attachments, sometimes even in matters that are indifferent or good in themselves, add my own ropes as though I were unsatisfied with the ropes the Jews used to bind him. Meanwhile, with his merciful gaze, Jesus calls me to remove his bonds. Do I not see that in that gaze, another reproach intended for me for having helped to bind him? If I am to relieve afflicted Jesus, I must remove my own chains before removing the chains of others. These little chains are frequently seen in my small attachments to my own will, to my self-love that is often offended, and my small vanities that weave a subtle web, sorrowfully binding my beloved Jesus. Overwhelmed by love for my soul, Jesus himself sometimes wishes to remove my chains so that I will not make him endure this sorrowful enchainment once more. Ah, I complain, because I do not want to be bound alone with Jesus. I want to keep something that is not his, and so I force him mournfully to withdraw from me. As my tormented Jesus suffers, he offers reparation for all sins against modesty. Am I pure in my thoughts, glances, words, and affections, so that I do not inflict more blows on that innocent body? Am I always bound to Jesus in such a way that I myself am ready to defend him whenever others strike him with their offenses? My enchained Jesus, may your chains be mine so that I always feel you in me and you always feel me in you.